Hey YouTube, it's your beekeeper here. Yeah, back at the workbench. It's Saturday early evening, just got home from work and um, just checking off some projects off my list. This project's been on my list uh, not too long in the grand scheme of things. It's only been about nine years, nine and a half, maybe ten years <laughs> since I've wanted to do this. This is a compressor. Yeah, I'm not, unfortunately, I'm not kidding about that. This is an air compressor off a 72 Cadillac. Um, it was for a load leveling system for the air, air ride system on the back. And years ago, it, it was broken. This little nub in here got broken off. Um, it's kind of a weird design. It had the pressure switch here, but it just made for bad torque. And, and somebody must have been working on it prior to me, and they stepped on it or banged it or whatever, and it broke off. So I went to a junkyard, and I got a new compressor and replaced it. And then I set this on a shelf with the intention to mount this into the Suburban. Yeah, I'd like onboard air on the Suburban. I have a tank, um, an air tank I'm gonna fashion this to, put it in the back of the sub and be able to have onboard air when I need it. Uh, and most importantly, most importantly is I want it to run some, I think they're 16 or 18 inch um, big rig horn, diesel horns. Um, not train horns, but big rig horns. My, even though it may look like a land train, it's not a train. So I don't, I don't need to sound like a train, but I, I do like the sound of big rig horns. So. I'm going to test the strength of the world's strongest bond, JB Weld. I remember using this stuff a lot as a kid uh, because I broke a lot of stuff as a kid and I had a mini bike that had a three horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine on it and I broke the carburetor off the thing and it was pop metal just like this, uh, the, the little manifold that goes in between the head and the carburetor, it's this cheap pop metal, it broke into three pieces and I used this exact stuff. The um, the, the cold weld formula and I glued it back together and it ran you know and had a carburetor on the end and had the air cleaner on the end of it torquing it all with the vibration of a mini bike and I remember I never had a problem I was good and clean the surface blah 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 and it ran 3960 psi so we're gonna try it we'll see if their see if their formulation still holds uh, so this video will just be me gluing everything together and it says it needs 24 hours and I'll come back with a part two to this vid and we'll air it up and we'll see if it blows apart and I'm also while I'm here I'm gonna fix a uh, pneumatic nailer that I have I dropped it dropped it and I broke the little nubbin off right here which goes to the end of the nailer which is the guide for the little pneumatic plunger that knocks nails in so now the nails go in sideways because it doesn't have this little this little doodad in here to keep the plunger going straight so I'm gonna clean this up I'm going to epoxy that, we'll see if that holds, and then we're going to epoxy this to see if this holds. I don't know. Big rig horns in a Suburban, right? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. So, a little bit of fast forward, and then I'll show you what we end up with. Okay, so it's Sunday afternoon. Just got back from work. I uh, I kind of had a uh, yesterday was a weird day. Saturday was weird. I started messing with this thing, and uh, my allergies are kicking my hiney right now. The trees are all pollinating, and uh, I took some allergy medicine, and I was just rummy last night. I was tired, and I, I couldn't think. Three straight thoughts in my head, so I stopped before I started to glue stuff and screwed it up. I got everything cleaned. I went through with sandpaper and cleaned everything out. I wanted to make some sort of foot or bracket that would support this this big weight. So I think I'm going to use this piece of scrap. I've got this little channel. I'm going to TIG weld it to the base of this base right here, the pressure base. Uh, this is actually a retaining collar that holds this pressure sensor here. Uh, so I think I can get in there with the TIG welder, make two or three nice fusion welds there without disturbing any of the electronics in here. That will allow me to support this. And then what I'll end up doing is I'm going to run some JB Weld and glue this to here. You know, I'm just going to do it and see what happens. Let's go ahead and fast forward. So there's the weld, 
came out kind of nice. I just hope I didn't get too much heat in there and screw up the, uh, I don't know, whatever's in that pressure switch. I probably screwed it up, so this is probably all for naught. All right, so I've got this sneaky feeling that I may have just screwed up this pressure switch by welding on it. Uh, I probably put too much heat. Yeah, so I pulled it off the little broken doodad. I put a quick fit, quick connector, excuse me, a quick connector on the end here. And I'm going to hook it to the compressor and hopefully there are no leaks. Um, in theory, this works pretty damn decent. It sets quite nicely on the body of the motor. And I can adjust it once I get this glued and I make sure everything's all nice and aligned. I can put some dabs of JB Weld on here to hold it down to the housing. Um, I think that'll work. I'll sand a little bit of the paint off so it gets a good bite. You know the routine, but, <coughs> so I'm not wasting my time. Let's see what happens. And let's do it on live TV. Well, not really live TV, but you know what I mean. Okay, there's no air in here right now. Okay, so, hey, Bay. this could all be an exercise in futility anyway. This whole JV Weld thing may not work for anything. Okay, so, let's let the airplane go by. Let's have a drink of some ice cold spring water. All right, fingers crossed for no leaks. Oh, we have to turn the air on. Okay, the airline is on. Turning up the regulator. 20, 30, yeah, that's a good idea, put my head right by it, 35, 40, I'm getting nervous guys, I don't know why, 45, 50, 55, 60. Now I don't know where this regulator is set. I should be hearing a click, I imagine here pretty soon where it, where it's shutting off the power. But I don't. What I don't hear. Oh yeah, I do. Where's the leak? Son of a bitch. Yeah, it's leaking. That's unfortunate. I bet I burned out the gasket in there. It's leaking. Stupid, fucking stupid. Let's see if the thing even works still. 60. Fuck it, let's just turn it all up. Blow this motherfucker up. 80, 100. It's at 110 right now. Hear it? And I didn't even hear the switch kick. Right here, look. Right where I burned the damn gasket. Jackass. What a friggin' jackass. I'm pretty sure I mentioned before I even started welding. That's what I was worried about. Oh, there's the switch. You hear the click? Spring compressing? You guys see that? I'm gonna videotape this so I can watch it later. Let's zoom in on that sucker. Maybe I could change that gasket. Uh, what do we have? About 40 pounds. Let's put it back up to 100. Oh yeah, spring compresses. That's a adjustable part, but the leak? Ah, oh, I'm an idiot. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm done. Maybe I'll take do some more video here in a little bit. I'm going to go inside for a while and bang my head in the wall.